what I want to do next is create a filter that's going to sort of edge damage. I'm probably going to go a little bit more extreme so that you can dial it back. So I want you to notice that um, due to the mic that I'm using, it actually cuts in and out of the audio after I start to stop speaking, so I hope that doesn't get too annoying. So one of the ways that we can start by creating that edge damage in our brick is if you go to filters here, down here we have a bunch of different ones. We have blurs, and it'll show us all our different types of blurs. Um, what I want to do is slope blur grayscale. So that's going to be based on these slopes that we've been using. Just go ahead and drag and drop that in for now. Next thing I want to do is find a filter, or I'm sorry, a generator that's going to give me um, sort of the noise I need to add those bricks. Um, if you remember, we've already used some other generators, right? We've used tile generator. It focuses just on the noise, right? And then if we go to patterns, you can see here's our brick, the random, the, the tile generator that we looked at. Have pavement, we have grunge, we have a lot of different ones. There's actually some that are weave, I believe I saw. Great for creating fabric. Down and look for Perlin noise. So here's Perlin noise one. We'll go ahead and drag and just drop that in here for now. Drag in the Perlin noise zoom. Now we're not going to use this one, but I just want to show you the difference. Notice that we have a width and a height and a distance, but when we click on this one, there isn't as many attributes for editing. This is you can adjust. If you highlight over perlade noise, see that it says zoom pops up. That's uh, that's the one we want to use in case you go ahead and delete this one. Perlade noise zoom. Now, if we select this, the reason it has the name Perlade noise zoom is now you can see that the zoom looks like we're zooming in and out of the noise. Now we're going to be using this to control the amount of our slope blur. Here, let's go ahead and grab this. I'm going to zoom in. Here's our slope and here's our grayscale. And we want to use that Perlin noise to control our slope. So go ahead and plug that in here. Now in order to get this to work, notice that we want to run our uh, our tile generator into this grayscale image. So if I grab this and I drop it inside of here, now when we click on it, we get more of this um, randomized look. I adjust this as well, it starts to update. Out a little bit more. That we're seeing. We want to um, want to create sort of that edged, shoveled look. So take your samples all the way up, so we get something a little bit more like this. We get more faceted edges. In order to see our intensity, we want to bring this so that we can start to see our bricks again. You can start to see how it would affect that shape of our bricks, right? Now for mode here, blur blurs the entire image. Min only puts the damage inward. From in here, see how it's going in, and then max goes outward. Click on that. Notice that we now have it going outward. We want to use min so our, our damage doesn't spread, it only goes in. Real bricks do, and it's up to you like how much. Now, depending on the type of brick that you have, if we go back to our Perlin noise, depending on the distance, it controls how much damage. I get all the way up, you can see we get really rough brick. I'm going to go just a little bit here. Really, you'll come back and adjust each one of these parameters. Find a brick that you like and you need to edit. Our medium chips, right? So, like again, if I bring this up to 20, you can see that it gives me a medium amount of noise. I want to create a large noise that's back the outside. So go ahead and select your slope blur grayscale and uh, hit control and D. 
bring this down here, and I'm going to delete by highlighting both and hitting. On your tile generator, remember we have a grayscale input. Go ahead and drag this and bring it into our grayscale input. Notice that if I double click this, we don't get much change, right? Because all we did is copy this into our slope blur uh, input. What I want to do is, again, grab this noise here, hit Control D. I'm going to bring it down here, and I'm going to reconnect it into this input. So I'm essentially doing kind of the same process. Notice that it looks just the same running into both of these, but this one is going to connect our, control our larger, and this is going to control uh, smaller details. Bring it back to our 3D viewer. Now it's really simple to get, um, so if we double click this, you can see our section here. All I'm going to do is increase the, bring down my disorder. Now when we double click this, you can see just in the intensity. And now we're just affecting that outside area. Increase the distance size. I'm sorry, decrease the distance size. Just the amount of disorder, really. That just that's in contrast. They were just affecting that. That's in contrast to this. A lot more surface. So we need to connect both of these together. So I'm going to move this forward a little. I no longer need our tile generator to be the grayscale because I'm going to use this. Now, if I plug this in here. If I double click this, you can now see that it's using both this noise and this. For example, if we double click this and I select this, if I shrink the distance, you can see now I'm affecting just the outside of it, like this. And if I double click this guy, click on this guy, just the, the, the intent now affecting the inside here. Now let's take a look at how it'll look in our 3D view. You hold shift on your keyboard and you click, you can actually grab all of those inputs and just plug it into our new slope image. Now when we look at our 3D viewer, you can see we get a little bit more surface detail. It starts to look like um, we get some cracks. There's only one problem is we want some of our bricks to be straight and we have a lot of damaged brick here. I'm going to go ahead and hit control S to save this as well. That would be fine if you want some cartoony brick, which is this starting to look like. But let's create a blend node that's going to control the amount of this going on. So it'd be more subtle for realistic brick. So I'm going to hit spacebar, and I'm just going to grab my blend mode from. Oop. Let's make sure that we don't have like edges selected. Side here, like my blend node. There we go, so that it doesn't add it there. Like take our original tile generator and just plug it into the background node, which is this. Take our our input from the slope blur. Now when we click on it, here's our blend between both, and it doesn't look much different. But the thing you want to do is, if you look at the opacity, if we take it all the way down to zero, it brings us back to our original brick the amount of intensity. A lot of different options for adjusting. I'll tell you, it's a pretty good idea to do this tutorial two or three times or take notes throughout it so you have rather different steps. All right, for the sake of using this node, because opacity is one, bring it down to maybe 0.5, shift, select this, our output here, and then just drop it into our foreground, and that'll automatically update or connect everything. That way we can see it update in our, now you can see we get a lot more harder, shot, like more realistic view. Increase my um, density of my normal map as 